then after you've gone through all of this work, it's time to share the plan. So you want to make sure that you print one for each staff member and yourself. You are going to be revising this as um, it calls for, and we'll talk about that a bit more in the future. And you want to make sure that it is displayed in an easily accessible area. A lot of teachers post theirs by the door so that when an administrator walks in, they can easily grab their zoning plan and see where students are supposed to be and who they are supposed to be with. So we have a few tips for displaying your zoning plan. Like I said, highly visible, easy to find. You want to have it in multiple locations. Now that doesn't mean you have to hang it on the wall in multiple locations, but you wanna make sure that every adult that is responsible for teaching in the classroom has a copy of their own to reference. And so sometimes you might put it on a clipboard. This picture is an example of what Daylene did for her paraprofessionals. She printed it out. She actually printed out multiple views and put that on a clipboard so that they could choose the view that was best for them. And we will look at some examples coming up. Um, so here is our first example. This is a color-coded example. As you see at the top, you have your teacher, teacher column and then your paraprofessional columns. They are assigned an activity and students for each activity. If you look here, Toward the bottom, you'll see tabs. So this is the class master schedule view here. And then we are going to look at the staff schedule next, but there was also a third tab that had para responsibilities. So at the end of the day, they had a list of things that they were assigned to do before their contract time ended. I also did that, but I was not as fancy as Daylene. I just had it written on the bottom of my zoning plan. Hey, Jenny. Yes. Can I point out that the colors um, coordinate with the stations in my classroom, the zones in my Absolutely. classroom? So, um, for example, on that, the example we just looked at, um, red was the math, generally the math zone. Blue was a literacy zone. Yellow was discrete trial. Um, and that just helped me with that visual piece. Thank you. So this is an example of what Daylene did for her paraprofessionals. She would go in and screenshot out their column so that they would have that in front of them. And they didn't have to look across the entire schedule and try to find their spot. Like this was much more streamlined and they could easily find where they were. Some people may like the big view. It's really up to you. Like I prefer the big view because I need to know where everyone's supposed to be and who they are supposed to be with. But this is a great option too. So really give your staff some, some options on what might work best for them. This is an example of what I used in my classroom one year. Uh, color printing was at a premium. And so I printed out a black white example and I took a highlighter and highlighted down the column so that they their eyes were drawn to the color and they would go straight down the column and know where they were supposed to be. So you use what you have. And now it's time to reflect and revise. I really like the reflect and revise section because, uh, well, let's talk about it. I'll tell you why. So here are some reasons you might need to revise your schedule. Every time you get a new student, you will have to redo a large portion of your zoning plan. Uh, some changes are really tiny, but this is going to be a big one. If you have a group that's not working by um, using your grouping tool that we daily talked about earlier, you would want to update that and you might need to make some changes. If you have any changes in your related services times, those would definitely need to be um, updated in your schedule. If you have changes in your general education time, make sure you note that. If there's any conflict at all with your current schedule, whatever it is, you need to make sure that that's updated. Or if there are any staff changes, we know that sometimes we lose a staff member, um, they move somewhere or they get a different job. If we lose a staff member, that also needs to be updated. Hey, Jenny, can I insert something? Of course you can. I just thought of. 
Um, so one thing that's really important is that your zoning plan matches what you're actually doing in the classroom on a regular basis. Um, there are always unexpected circumstances that come up and we get off schedule, but in general, your zoning plan should um, be a pretty clear picture of what's happening in the day. So if it's not, then that's a good time to revise. Thank you, Daylene. So the next thing we recommend is teaming. The team approach is a fantastic approach. It really allows for an open dialogue between everyone that is using the zoning plan. You need to create a feedback tool or you can use the zoning plan that you have. So I've seen people do two different things, three different things actually. You could just have everyone take notes on the actual zoning plan. Sometimes space is limited. So if you want very detailed notes, that wouldn't be a good option. I've seen teams create a Google document and they went in and updated that at the end of the day. Or I've seen teams use paper pencil to provide notes. It's very efficient. At the end of the week, you can look and review and have some quick discussions about what worked and what didn't and make changes based on that data. With your reflections, you wanna make sure you're noting the date, the time of rotation, the area or station or zone. You want to do note things that are positive and any challenges, and you wanna provide details. So I have a couple of examples here. The first example, they have color zones. So this was the red zone. And it says, this rotation went great. Students loved the activity and were engaged. And so this did not include any student initials, but you could include student initials if you wanted to, but you could easily reference back to the zoning plan and know exactly which students were there. The second example is group writing. So it says using a big whiteboard so the student won't throw the small ones. She has been getting more physical with other students. So that's a really important note. You want to make sure you have that data for the aggression. And that would be something really important to talk about at the end of the week about that group. And now we have a video to share with you. And this is from a special education, co education coordinator that has a team using reflections and how it has impacted their team. Hello, I'm Kelly Dollar, the special education lead here at Evening Star Elementary School. This year, we've collaborated with Easter Seals in one of our special classrooms. Today, I'm gonna to talk about how reflecting on our zoning plans has helped us serve our students here at Evening Star. The first way is collaboration with the whole team. So our teachers and paras take reflective notes during the day, anytime they have something that is working or an idea that they might have or something that we might need to change. And these reflections are shared amongst that team and then also with me as the special education lead and our principal and assistant principal. So we're all able to see what's going on and what might need to be changed or adjusted for the next day or week. The next way that reflecting on our zoning plans has helped us this year is in collecting data for different students. So um, at one station, a student might be working with a para and that para can take down a note that that student is mastering a skill or um, needs the next level of that skill. And so the teacher's able to see that at the end of the day and make those adjustments in her lesson plans. The last way that looking at zoning plans has helped us this year is that teachers and paras are so busy during the day following that schedule and rotating those stations that they don't always have time to talk. So at the end of the day, after they've written their reflections throughout the day, they're able to sit down and talk with one another about any adjustments or changes that need to be made to the schedule or groupings of students. So these are just some of the ways that we have used our reflections on our zoning plans this year at Evening Star. Thank you. All right, we really appreciate Kelly taking her time to reflect on reflecting. We are so 
glad that that is helpful for teams. And we really recommend that you give it a try with your paraprofessionals. Um, it really helps with teaming and building relationships. People like to know that their voice is being heard. And that's one way that you can build community within your classroom team. Okay, now we're to the point where we're going to talk about a few things that can help make it work for you. Um, what fits your style? How does your brain work? Um, you may have already seen in our presentation today some templates and some examples that you really connected with, and that's great. But someone else, even the person sitting right next to you, might see something completely different um, that they connect with because we all, our brains work differently and we have um, different ways of experiencing things. So we're going to talk about a few examples. The first one is a color coded example and the colors in this one represent the staff members. So there was a staff member um, who was the blue color, one who was the pink color, one who was the purple color. And it looks like there was one staff member who maybe came in the room for a math group from eight to 8.30, but wasn't in the room the rest of the morning. So this type of a zoning plan is a little harder the more students you have, because you can see the student um, row at the top, but you, this might be an option for you, especially if you work in a one to six classroom where there are fewer students. Okay, this is a secondary example. It's very similar to the other examples that we've shown you. It has the same format as all of the templates that Jenny went through before. But what I really want to point out is some of the details in the less, less structured parts of the day that can be so helpful for staff. For example, in this zoning plan, during arrival, there's a lot of detail about what those staff members are doing. You could even assign specific students to staff members to make sure that everyone is accounted for and everyone is being um, supervised. You can see during breakfast time, again, some details there, which students are going to be completing their personal care routines during that time. And I just really like that, that, that is included in this example. Um, just a little note that they're assigning students to staff members is really important if you have frequent challenging behaviors like students who elope from the classroom or students who may put in inedible objects in their mouths um, or any other behaviors that are, are related to safety that are concerning for students. You may have students with serious healthcare needs that you need to really have someone have an eye on and consider that. So just making sure that that's part of your zoning plan is important. Here's an expanded version where a teacher has taken the zoning plan and you can see at the top that they have it. This is like a week view. They're making it more of their weekly lesson plan. And they've really expanded it out. So that first box for 7 to 7.30, it takes up half the page because they have a lot of details in there. In this example, the colors also coordinate to staff members. So that's one quick way for a staff member to look at the whole week's plan and know where they are and what they're supposed to be doing. It's just another option for you. The Arkansas Department of Education put out this playbook companions document on the left uh, for virtual learning at the beginning of COVID. And it would also be great um, to consider some tech free options for students during those AMI days. A home schedule might also be something that's beneficial for our students if they're sent home for an extended period of time due to sickness, due to COVID or even weather related events, um, just some ideas and some options for you to consider when you're thinking about students who may be learning virtually. So now some tips and tricks for running your zoning plan. You've got a great zoning plan created, you spent, or at least you have a draft created, right? Maybe you've already revised it and changed it a few times, but how do you run the plan? What's, what's the next step? And that is um, using a timer so that you can make sure that you're being consistent with those times, that you're rotating whenever the schedule says, whenever the zoning plan says that it's time to rotate. Um, one thing that helped me was assigning a para the timer job, because then that was one thing that was taken off of me. I could just focus on teaching and running my station. Um, the para was able to reset the timer and keep me on track. 
Consistency is key. It's really important to run the plan as much as possible, even though we know that things are going to happen, which brings me to the next bullet. If you're off schedule, get back on. Maybe something happened. Maybe there was an unexpected, maybe there was a fire drill. Maybe there was an unexpected, um, some sort of other derailment in your day. But look at the schedule. Where are you supposed to be at that time and get back on? Uh, for new classroom routines, we do need to heavily reinforce students. So just considering that when you're starting a zoning plan and you're asking students to maybe do something different than you've asked them to do before, maybe they're rotating throughout the room more frequently. So heavy reinforcement can help to teach those new skills. And then for students who may be struggling a little bit with the zoning plan, you can do a preferred non-preferred kind of back and forth with them. Maybe first you have a preferred activity scheduled, then they go to something that's not so preferred. And then maybe they go back to a preferred activity so that that helps to increase their buy-in with the zoning plan. There's also a little picture of Alexa on the screen, just as a note that you can also use Alexa as a timer. There are many different timer options and I forgot to mention those, but Alexa is one of them where you can set that up and you can say, hey Alexa, run the timer. Um, and it will set that for you and go off on time. A lot of teachers use time timers, which is a visual timer on the wall. That was one of my personal preferences. We also see teachers that use different kinds of visual timers that they may project up on their smart board. And that's an option as well. Some teachers use an iPad or their iPhone or any kind of phone and set the timer so that it consistently goes off throughout the day to remind them when to to move on. Hey, Daylene, can I add a couple of small things? Absolutely. Number one, Time Timer app is free right now. It is October 13th, 2021. So go check it out and see if it's still available for free. It is an excellent app. And I was so excited when it was free for, and it's only a limited time. So make sure that if you watch this and you're interested, hop on your app store or your Android, it's available for Android too, and check that out. And the second thing is that Daylene was talking about new classroom routines using heavy reinforcement and then preferred versus non-preferred. I just want to point out, this is not a standalone document. Your student schedules are going to flow from your zoning plan. So this is not all we're doing and stopping here to support our students with transitioning. Later, we'll do a training over student schedules. Great point, Jenny, thank you. The next thing we have is some educator tools for you to help you get started with your zoning plan and really support your success with that. First is a task analysis document that we have created that follows this training. And it's really a step-by-step -step plan for how to write your zoning plan. So if you um, are finished with the training and you need some help and support with that, as most people do, I can't hold all that information in my head. If you can, that's amazing. Um, but this is here for you to help you. It will be added to the resources folder on our website along with this recorded training. It's already there. 